America and this is Eat Country Lifestyle. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be discussing how to find fish in virtually any type of water. First of all, I'd like to go over with you the two main types of water. You have still water and moving water. Still water will include ponds, lakes, and anywhere where you have stationary water. water that is not moving. This could be a canal, uh, say uh, near a dam where the water isn't moving, uh, moving water. Obviously you're going to have streams and rivers and creeks. So again, still waters, you've got ponds, lakes, and anywhere where this, the water is stationary, where that means where it's not moving, uh, it, you know, it might be near a dam, that's a good example. Uh, now with moving waters, you obviously have streams, rivers, and creeks. Anywhere where you've got a flow, velocity of water that's moving. Now, the way you're going to work each type of water depends on the species of fish that you're targeting in each type of water. So I'm going to make a simple diagram. Here's our imaginary lake still water. Now I'm going to make some simple symbols here. These will signify trees. More specifically trees close to shore. Now we'll just put a little grove or a little concentration of trees in here. Now, uh, say a typical lake will have Give me some deadfalls here. Those are simply trees that have, like these, that have died off and fallen right into the water. Generally, we refer to deadfalls as any tree that has uh, died across, along the shoreline and has fallen into the water, so it's partially above water and partially submerged. So, usually, where you find one deadfall, you'll find two or three. We'll just call this uh, shoreline uh, basic sand. Or mud, maybe there's some cattails in here along this little bay. Okay, and maybe there's a dam down in this end. Looks like a good place to put a dam. And as many of you know, when you find a dam, you'll find riprap. That's generally what they do when they build dams. They backfill with different types of gravel and riprap. So let's put some rip rap and rocks under here and maybe the guys that were building the dam decided to throw some rock right down here maybe that's where it ended up we'll call this a small reservoir now these would be submerged and let's see what other types of cover could you have well let's say for example there used to be a creek coming through right through the middle of the lake and then you'd have an underwater or a submerged creek channel represented by these dots here, the dotted lines, which would be a likely place to construct a dam. And then, of course, that you'd have a creek or an old creek bed behind it. And we'll say maybe there was used to be some property over here where there's a farm, maybe there's an old road bed, some submerged fence posts down here maybe remnants of an old uh, road bed or fence post, whatever the case may be. So there's, there's our lake and we have several different types of cover. Now, we'll look at this area and we'll just say that maybe this zone in here is four to six feet. This would probably be the deepest area since it was near the dam. This could be anywhere from, well, we'll say 15 to 30 feet down on this end. Now down here would be more of a shallow area along the shoreline. Maybe it's uh, mud and sand and some cattails and a little sort of marshy. And this would probably be similar to this area here, maybe even more shallow. Maybe it's only 
two to four feet deep in here. And along these deadfalls, we'll just say, for the sake of this diagram, that there are uh, there's a there's a deep drop off here, maybe a, or a steep drop off. Maybe in here it's uh, just a couple feet, but then it drops down to we'll say 12 feet in this area here. Now, depending on the type of species that inhabit the lake and depending on the type of fishing that you're doing uh, in terms of tackle, uh, if you're fishing from shore, that's another consideration, or if you're fishing from a boat, uh, you want to take all these factors into consideration. When generally when fishing a still water, we'll say this is a small reservoir, large pond type of thing. Now, for example, if we wanted to target largemouth bass, we know that largemouth bass will move into shallow water uh, quite often, uh, even during the middle of the day. On a hot day, they'll move into shallows. Of course, they could be hanging off a, a deep ledge as well. In here, maybe in, in a ledge off here. Uh, generally, wouldn't go seeking them in a creek channel unless uh, you didn't find them in the shallows. Fishing still water for game fish like uh, panfish and largemouth bass uh, it's best to start looking for these species in shallow water near cover. Now, if you've got bright, a bright sunlit day, here's a good tip. If you're fishing uh, heavy, brushy cover like this, uh, it's a good idea to fish the shady side of cover. The shady side of cover is more likely to hold uh, game fish. Uh, it's just like on a hot day when we're out fishing, we like to try to find shade and duck into cover when we can to keep from getting too hot. Well, it seems that the fish like to do the same thing. So that's going to be one of the first places we target uh, panfish and, and bass well, in and around cover. Look for the shady side of cover. Now, if we were going to fish near the dam, let's go down here to the deep end where it ranges from, say, 15 to 30 feet. And say we're going to target walleye down here. Perhaps there's some crappie down there too. Uh, those two species tend to stick, sort of stick together in uh, terms of where they roam in uh, different seasons. For example, uh, in the summertime, late summer, early fall, you're going to find these two species hanging uh, in and around deep water. Uh, a lot of times you'll find them right up tight to cover. Uh, if fishing tends to be slow on a certain day, you're going to find these fish hugging very, very tight to cover. On days where it's more overcast, where there's a little wind, you're going to find fish closer to the surface. But on sunny days, you're going to want to stay deep for these two types of species, for walleye and crappie. <clears throat> now, smallmouth bass is another story. Smallmouth bass tend to like a cooler, more clear uh, type of water, whether it be still water or moving water. But generally speaking, in uh, lakes and reservoirs, uh, you're going to find smallmouth bass. During the summertime, in deeper water, uh, they love to hang around submerged rocks. They also like shoreline. Uh, you're not going to find these fish too awful shallow unless you're fishing later in the season, uh, perhaps early in the fall and in early in the springtime. Now, if you happen to be targeting, say, uh, northern pike or pickerel in uh, water that looks somewhat like this, probably the first place to look uh, is in, uh, in cover where you're, you've got sort of a deep drop off that's also close to uh, shallow shoreline cover, like the, the, the region here where we've denoted cattails. We've got some shallow water uh, in the springtime. Uh, for example, northern pike will be up uh, towards the shallows. Say there's some uh, cover, uh, say there's some submerged trees or stumps or something uh, in towards the cattails in the shallow area here. You're going to be one of looking for the northern pike and pickerel along deep weed lines that are adjacent to shallow water. So remember, this area in here, two to four feet, likely has a drop off here before you come into a creek channel. 